I don't have much of anything meaningful to say about Call of Duty anymore. When it comes to everything wrong with it, it's just Tom Clancy for Zoomers. Just like those novels let your elderly relatives rest at ease knowing they were at least winning the Cold War in the world of spy and military fiction, when modern life leaves you feeling small and insignificant, modern warfare is there to let you feel like your testosterone levels are normal. It's entertainment junk food. And I'm not just making that comparison due to Call of Duty's marketing deals with Mountain Dew and Doritos. The most damning thing I can say about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is that there are now three games that all bear the name Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. You have the original, the remastered original with better graphics, and now the remake of it with better graphics and a completely different plot, which makes it a pretty poor remake following none of the original story, except for a betrayal that happens midway through the game and an end credit sequence that includes a famous no Russian line that is supposed to make you cream your jeans, but raise your hand if you believe Activision is brave enough to include that scene as it was in 2009 in the year of our lord 2024, or whenever the Modern Warfare 3 remake releases, with everything else being entirely different, that's no longer a remake, that's just more Call of Duty. If this and the last Modern Warfare game are Call of Duty's ideal of a remake, then it goes toward proving my belief that Call of Duty isn't so much a shooter as it is a sports game with guns. You can't actually change the rules, just the presentation. Picture EA remaking Madden 09. For a game to be remade, I feel you should be able to find a good reason to reimagine older games with modern graphics, plot tweaks, and updated gameplay. If I played the remake of Modern Warfare 2 in the original game back to back, I doubt I would notice any difference beside the entirely different plot. Call of Duty continues its tradition of name-dropping Western countries when the events are set there, except Iran, since you can't sell games there. Armed personnel, armor and hardware, all Russian. What the hell are the Russians doing with Gorbrani? Supply in Iran. It's an arms deal. If Russia is selling weapons to an Iranian general, why wouldn't they make that sell in Iran where it would be safe from anyone who might try to disrupt it? The US military doesn't have any reason to hide its missile launch systems inside shipping containers. We're pretty open about it when we're bombing you. And a shipping container doesn't even make good camouflage in the desert anyway. You don't manually guide ballistic missiles, as this game calls them. We have a hit on Gabrani second in command. Hassan Zayani, Quds Force Major. He's taken up the mantle for Iran. Supplying terrorists. Money, weapons, intel. Well, he's ambitious. He's dangerous, sir. He wants retaliation for the Gabrani strike. If you play the previous Modern Warfare 1 remake, you may have noticed that none of this has anything to do with the villain the ending of that game set up. He never even appears, having been completely written out. Ghost and Soak will lead a Marine Special Operations Unit to kill or capture Hassan tonight. All shooters have execute authority, but we want Hassan alive for interrogation. But you just said your men are to kill or capture Hassan. Call of Duty villains really enjoy live streaming while under fire. I just wonder what platform they use to host these Death to America rants. They mean Jesus. They stick missiles. Some of our launcher. These will go a thousand miles. Those are not ballistic missiles. We saw one launched earlier to strike the Iranian general during the arms deal. It was a cruise missile that was guided manually through mountain valleys by a person. Ballistic missiles launch, rocket above the atmosphere, then come down in a non-powered flight on a programmed ballistic course toward its target. Hence the name ballistic missile. Ghost, do you have Hassan? Negative. We found a weapons cache. Hassan's got missiles. They're American. Hassan got himself some of the US missiles that are disguised as cargo containers. But since we know they look like cargo containers, that makes finding them a lot easier. Since there are only so many places where cargo containers enter the country. And if you have a good idea where the shipping containers are coming from, that makes it even easier to find them. Amsterdam. What the hell's Amsterdam got to do with this? It's a smuggling hub. Ports and canals are insecure. Iran has friends there. There are a lot of smuggling hubs in the world. Picking Amsterdam with nothing to point you to it specifically is a guess at best. You don't even know if Hassan is planning to smuggle the Manalo Mazra. That is not the hat you wear when you're going to be swimming in canals. Mexican cartel. What the hell are they doing here? Might well. Iran's using the cartel for transport. Give me a name, John. Las Almas. Hassan's working with narcos. Hassan is working with Mexican cartels to smuggle his missiles and himself into the US. That's something that's very unlikely and generally a made up argument used to tamp down an immigration policy. Cartel members don't use password protection or any security on their phones. That way when authorities grab them, they can see the messages coming in as soon as they pull it from their pocket. Laswell knows Hassan is going to cross the US-Mexican border, and her first move is to contact someone in Mexican Special Forces instead of using US military intelligence or law enforcement to stop him. They seem to know the exact area where Hassan is going over the wall thanks to capturing a cartel member in Amsterdam. They could be there waiting for him. She had options, and used none of them except for the least efficient one. Where's FBI on this? 
FBI's an hour out. Maybe if you had told them before Alejandro, they would already be here. Here's the huge issue with relying on Mexican special forces in nab Hassan. Once Hassan crossed the border, they have to illegally cross after him. A huge risk for any armed Mexican military to cross the border where they end up pointing guns at civilians and even shooting cartel members. Local police even end up dead. This would be all over the news for months and would be such a massive scandal that it would likely end Laswell's career and bog down the search for Hassan. Gomez, hold up. These are her guys. <laughs> Hard to tell you boys apart from cartel. Where's your suspect? Track the they make sure to have the cops say something bigoted before killing them. I'm getting conflicted political messaging from all this. On one hand, it uses the unlikely scenario of cartels smuggling terrors into the U.S., and on the other, it has bigoted cops and U.S. PMZ forces. It is an election year, after all. Do you think they drew straws for which one would stay in the middle of the room to be shot, while the other hid behind the door and waited until after his friend had been killed, and his other friend had missed every shot, to finally step out and hit Rodolfo in the head? Algo está cruzando el Atlántico. Hay un barco. Entregando algo. There is not a chance in hell that Rodolfo managed to read any convenient intel on the wall through his concussion in the fire and smoke, and Hassan was only in this cartel's safe house for a minute. Why would he already have detailed plans pinned to the walls? You can only die in a Call of Duty game if the camera remains in first person. Hassan was taken back into cartel protection in Las Almas. Well, that was a big waste of time. Hassan crossed the border into the U.S., then crossed right back into Mexico, having done nothing. Mexican special forces confirmed Hassan is moving something sizable towards the U.S. The cargo could be containers housing missiles. Then check cargo containers arriving at ports for a missile. Why is this not being done? We can't start a war in Mexico, General. We certainly not. I'll task Philip Graves and his shadow company PMCs to assist. I highly doubt the Mexican government would care about the minor differences between U.S. military and a U.S. owned and equipped PMC. How would an American PMC group ever get clearance to operate clandestinely in Mexico? They would still need permission and funding from the Mexican government. I don't know how everyone doesn't crack up laughing whenever a ghost starts talking. Refusing to remove his skull mask must greatly limit the type of missions he can go on. Can't exactly remain covert in an urban area while wearing that. You can always tell when a game is worried about the messaging, when they give you the good guy version of the same people who gives you the go-ahead to kill his countrymen. A game can make enemies of whoever it wants. But when you have to try so hard to justify it, you only make how odd it is stand out all the more. Sometimes, you just have to bite the bullet and wear your racism on your sleeve. Otherwise, you make it weird. You want us to engage the fucking Mexican army? No, Gunner. These troops are paid by the cartel. They're helping the cartel protect us son. Being under cartel employee usually means selling them weapons or tipping them off to a raid. Not sending a battalion into a suicide mission against a special forces unit covered by a C-130 gunship. I'd love to know how Graves PMC was able to operate a C-130 gunship in Mexico's airspace and fire on the Mexican military and an important infrastructure like bridges, or how a PMC can somehow legally operate a C-130 gunship. We don't sell those to other nations, let alone private military contractors. I think an American warplane shooting up a Mexican town is going to make the news whether this is cartel territory or not. This is international incident material. You speak Arabic? No. Farsi? No. Of course not. And I'll speak your bastardized medieval English. Because you're all uneducated street dogs. Uh. Activision thinks making scenes where a captive speaks the language of its captives is some kind of own. Last time it was speaking German, and now we have an Iranian speaking English. Who'd you get American missiles from? I don't care who they're from, I want to know where they're going. General Shepard does have his reasons for not wanting to look into that, but Hassan could really mess with him by revealing he got the missiles from Shepard and Graves. I'm a hostage here. This is illegal. You're a prisoner of war. Iran is not at war with Mexico. I've broken no laws. Was the Mexican government allowing you to be in Mexico? Also, they already know you've stolen American missiles, you also crossed the border illegally, shot up a U.S. town that resulted in the deaths of American law enforcement, and tried to murder a Mexican Special Forces soldier. There are any number of options to arrest you with in either country. I want this bastard in permanent custody or looking up at the goddamn grass. General, killing Hassan is an act of war. Keeping him is illegal. Right now, he is too hot to hold. We were sent on a mission to capture a kill Hassan back in Maidupistan. Now, killing him would be an act of war. These guys even blew up the Iranian general at the start of the game, which is what set Hassan off. And it's Iran. What are they going to do? Invade the United States? But Laswell's right. Without proof, we need to turn him loose, see where he leads us. Even if you can't kill or detain Hassan, you don't have to release him back into Mexico. Deport him back to Iran. Slowly. It would give you more time to unravel what he's up to. The only thing they got out of this was tracing a phone call Hassan made to a hatchery plant in Spain, which serves as a smuggling front. Since Spain is an ally, you should be able to work through the Spanish government to raid the place. But no, Price and Gaz must sneak in wearing ghillie suits, because the remakes have the order of events screwed up. The ghillie suit mission should have been in the Modern Warfare 1 remake. We have 
have no jurisdiction here, John. You didn't have jurisdiction in Mexico as well. And Spain is part of NATO. Why can't they go in if Mexican special forces can help you in Mexico? Alcatala terrorists grabbed Laswell out on her boat, who I think was here just so she could be captured, because she wasn't doing anything particularly useful. Terrorists always use decade-old phones to make videos. This is proof of life. Where did this come from? Urzikstan. Did they actually make a vlog about capturing a CIA agent and even reveal where they had taken her? Urzikstan is supposed to be located by the Black Sea, but they somehow got her from Spain to there in no time. No. That point's an ace. Likely to El Masra. Based on what point of reference in the video, you couldn't even see the sun. Since Shepard won't help rescue Laswell, Price recruits Farah from the previous Modern Warfare game to help. I guess she had nothing better to do and could muster her forces to rescue a CIA agent at a moment's notice. But the bigger issue is how do you know the terrorists wouldn't kill Laswell at the first sign of any attempt to take her back? They have zero reason to keep her alive. It's a chopper. You don't have to fly directly over the highway so that Gas, who's hanging upside down after being knocked out by an RPG, has to dodge traffic while shooting. Don't volunteer all at once to help the 50-year-old woman as she chokes out a terrorist. They just stand there and watch while she proves she isn't a helpless woman after the game made her the damsel in distress for a bit. Missiles were never in Spain, the guidance systems were. Guidance systems? Where the hell did they get those? Russians. How do you suddenly know this? The terrorists didn't tell you while they held you captive, did they? And where did the Russians get the guidance systems for American missiles from? Weren't you working with the Russians at the end of the Modern Warfare 1 remake to take on the terrorists? That's what the ending suggested. Get one of us inside, find the boss, roll him up. I'll do it. You go in there and they'll kill you, hermano. I'll take my chances. We came here to stop a missile. Let's stop it. I'll offer intel for a meet with Sinombri. And if he's there, we pounce. So volunteers to be the sacrificial lamb to get inside and meet with the cartel leader in exchange for info. Meanwhile, Alejandro gets inside by just taking a guard suit. Since the only thing they needed was to get inside to identify the cartel leader, they could have just left it to Alejandro. Soap ends up having to sneak around the manor anyways. I want to see Elsa Nombre. Soap asks to meet the cartel leader in return for information on who attacked them. They don't bother asking him why he wants to meet the boss, especially after he's given up all the valuable info before meeting him. Who attacked us? Valeria questions Soap on who attacked the cartel. Just who do you think? They used a C-130 gunship and were after the Iranian terrorists you were housing while he tried to sneak into the US to launch an attack on it. Maybe it was Canada. Who knows? What proof do you have? Revisa mi posillo. After questioning Soap on the American PMC company and its leader, they untie him and let him walk around the party upstairs. Even though it should be obvious that the only way Soap could know any of that information is if he were part of the operation that attacked them. Turns out Valeria was El Sin Nombre, and is then easily captured by landing a helicopter on the roof. In a lot of these missions, I don't feel like I do much. I know COD doesn't trust the player, and always gives them a chaperone who walks them down hallways and opens doors for them, but I'm feeling increasingly pointless in this game. As long as there is a war on terror, there will be no real war on drugs. That is some thick logic. If you help terrorists attack the United States, then you are a terrorist and the US would come for you. Just because you sell drugs doesn't mean you wouldn't be considered a terrorist. Lots of terrorists sell drugs. The Taliban's main export was opium, and a war on drugs is no real threat to you. The last one only increased profits for narcos. And to think that US law enforcement can't go after drugs while the army goes after terrorists can be added to the list of stupid stuff that just came out of your mouth. I can tell you where to find the missiles. When you return, I'll tell you where Hassan is. In exchange, you will let me go and get the fuck out of Las Almas me largan ya. As confident as these characters are at killing, they continue to suck in negotiation, allowing their captive to walk all over them and dictate the terms. The second missile is on an abandoned oil rig the cartel uses as a smuggling base, which has to make it the worst smuggling base in the world, because it would be simple to keep watch over it. The whole point of these missiles being disguised as cargo containers means you can ship them anywhere inconspicuously. Why store it somewhere you would never find a cargo container? Actual, we got a problem. Missile is armed. Controls are somewhere on the ship. They move the controls for the missile to the cargo ship while the missile is still on the oil platform. Instead of disabling the missile so it can't launch, they have to quickly cross to the ship and raid it to get their hands on the control module to change the target. Just strap some C4 explosives to it, guys. Clear the platform and done. I'll admit that the unsecured cargo sliding around which can crush you and enemies is a pretty nice touch. We can't disarm it. Why? It's too late. There's no abort code? Yeah, well, the window's closed on that, boys. The window closed on the abort code before the missile is even launched? Why is everything having to do with these missiles just wrong? They call them ballistic missiles when they are clearly cruise missiles. You can't abort launch before even launching, and they are needlessly designed to look like cargo containers. It's headed for New Orleans. Not anymore. What's in New Orleans you'd want to shoot with a missile? And if you commit this terrorist act now, using your last missile on a far more important target is going to be next to impossible. This is the immediate future. Step away from the gate. What? You heard me. Crazy. 
This is my base. Not a base. This is a sizable covert facility. And I admire it. So I'm taking it. You boys have been relieved. Thank you for your service. So are you telling me that the US PMC that shot up an entire Mexican town can just take over a special forces military base in Mexico with no reprisal from the government? I'm calling Shepard. General Shepard sends his regards. He told me all wouldn't take this well. He knows about this. He's put me in command of this operation from here on out. So y'all need to stand down. It's time to let the pros finish this. Shepard's betrayal is a little less climactic this time around. I don't even see the logic behind this move. The 141 team was doing just fine tracking down the missiles in Hassan. But now he decides that with one missile remaining, he needs to get rid of them unless they discover that he and Graves are responsible for the missiles falling into Hassan's hands. Something none of them suspected. And to top it off, after this moment, Shepard and Graves seem to stop looking for Hassan and the remaining missile. So what was their plan going forward? If Shepard is willing to go as far as killing the 141 team, why did he let Hassan go? Legality clearly doesn't matter to him. There, Ghost. That was a big mistake, brother. Did not have to be like this. This remake couldn't even kill Ghost this time around. For some reason, that edgelord is the Boba Fett of this series. Earlier, Graves had to let Hassan go due to legality. Here, his men kill an entire city block of people looking for soap and ghosts like it's no big deal. Soap's wound will only inconvenience him for this one level. Soap tossed his sidearm after it went dry while running from the PMC mercenaries. I guess he doesn't carry any spare mags on that tactical vest of his. Now he's unarmed and has to craft weapons while making his way toward ghosts holed up in a church. Where are we? Alejandro safe house. Gave him the location just in case. Alejandro had a massive military base for his special forces unit and a safe house full of equipment set up in the same area. What exactly was the guy preparing for? Cartels taking over the entire country? I don't recall Rodolfo being present when the PMC took over, and Alejandro's men inside the base were all detained by them, yet he's hiding out in Alejandro's safe house. Graves is holding him here, his own personal black state prison. Rodolfo has been a busy guy tonight. He somehow learned of the PMC takeover, and he already knows where Graves is holding Alejandro. And Graves must have been even busier. He not only commandeered Alejandro's base, but took over an entire city and set up a black site prison in country. Awful lot of security here for what amounts to one guy in a solitary confinement cell and a few others in another. Did you need an entire prison for that? Even though Price didn't know anything about what was going on here in Mexico, or with the black site prison, he shows up to help them escape regardless. The game explains that Laswell called him, but that doesn't explain how he knew to come to this location or who to shoot at because she didn't either. Shepard burned us. He said Greece and the shadows to kill us around the Los Vaqueros. We know why. Might as well did a bit of digging. What did she find? Truth. Did it only take a bit of digging to uncover the truth? If that's the case, then it should have been uncovered a while ago. Laswell isn't the only CIA operative in this universe, is she? According to Laswell, General Shepard was contracting Greys to facilitate the sale of the missiles to allies in the Middle East to combat Russia. Along the way, the convoy was attacked and killed and the missiles taken. Everything Graves and Shepard have been doing was an attempt to cover up that failure, which I don't see how it ever could. The sale of the missiles seemed easy enough for Laswell to figure out once she actually looked into it, so just destroying the missiles and doing something about Hassan wouldn't do anything to solve their problem. No one sits in the middle back seat when the window seats are available, unless they're on Bing Bus. I understand the need for revenge, but how exactly is Price's 141 unit going to continue to operate rogue? He's leading an attack on an American PMC, meaning he's going to be killing a whole lot of US citizens. Just because they're depicted as the bad guys now, doesn't mean the US would be okay with a group of UK soldiers acting without orders and killing them. Ghost must have come to Mexico prepared for this moment since he has a whole box of ghost masks ready for everyone to put on. That's not ours! Holy shit, great throw fucking tight! Graves can not only get his hands on US military equipment like C-130 gunships and ballistic missiles, he even brought what looks like a state-of-the-art tank. He was only in charge of this base for like a day, yet he shipped in this. told us the third missile was smuggled into the United States through the port of Chicago. How about that? They shipped the missile through a US port, even though they knew Hassan was trying to ship weapons disguised as cargo containers into the US. Hassan and his AQ soldiers are with it. Hassan, along with many of his men, also managed to get into the US despite all of this. I suppose they found a better way than climbing the border wall this time. We do know that Hassan was taken to a building in downtown Chicago owned by a shell company at the Las Almas Cartel. Why exactly did Hassan need to take over this building in Chicago and hold hostages to launch his missile? It's a so-called ballistic missile with a 1,000 mile range. You could launch it from a cornfield if you want. Our primary mission is to locate and stop the missile. But you have execute authority to kill Hassan. They can kill Hassan now without it being an act of war? Hassan could have just destroyed the launch controls after finally launching the missile, since he doesn't need it anymore, but holds onto it instead, allowing Soap to grab it in the elevator. Shane, the target is DC. Coordinates 38, negative 77. 
That's the Pentagon. You know a location that has a lot of missile defense? Washington, D.C. They're not dealing with hypersonic missiles. They would shoot this thing down. You lose your only weapon in the elevator cutscene, so they bring back the crafting system from earlier while you hide and destroy the missile in the office. I had to craft shivs made of glass to kill Hassan's men. But in this cutscene, where Hassan tries to throw Soap out a window, you can see a combat knife on Soap's vest that he could have used instead. They're working with someone new. We don't know his name. He's not bad. Who is he? Makarov. Considering that the previous Modern Warfare 1 remake set up a completely different villain who was written out of the sequel, I'm not sure you should get hyped over Makarov, especially since it's going to be harder to convince people that Russia is a capable threat that could actually invade the US after recent events in Ukraine. 